Faith. Powerful. My, my, my. Powerful. That's what we're going to talk about this morning for a few oh, minutes. Right. Faith. Come on. Amen. Come on. Hallelujah. You know, in the day that we live in, so many times people call you a fundamentalist. And they, right. they, they act like it's a bad thing. Yeah. I looked up the word for fundamental mm -hmm. or fundamentalist. And I kind of like being in that group myself. Mm -hmm. It's one who believes in a return to the fundamental principles of the Bible. Come on. I don't see nothing wrong in that. Amen. Amen. One who believes the inerrancy uh -huh. of Scripture. Meaning that Scripture is absolute, correct, period. No questioning it. Come on, say it, it means what it says, and it says what it means. Amen. Come on. The uh, new mini-series that is airing on the History Channel called The Bible... They were talking about it on the O'Reilly Factor. and Bill O'Reilly was talking about some of the stories in the Bible being allegorical. Yeah. In other words, he picks and chooses which one he decides he's going to believe is true and which ones aren't. Come on. But i got news for you. All the way from the book of Genesis to the closing in the book of Revelation, it is truth. Yeah, Amen. Matter. True. No questioning that. You might question it, but doesn't change it, and it's still truth. Amen. Yes, sir. But I don't believe that we've ever lived in a day, or at least I haven't anyway, and I've been preaching for 30 years, almost 30 years. And I don't believe I have ever seen a day when you have to defend the fundamental beliefs, the fundamental teachings of the Bible, any more than you have to today. And not so much to the world, that's a given. Right. But I find myself more and more having to defend these things to the church. Yeah, Amen. Yeah, Come on. And I use that word loosely this morning. I hate that, but yeah. I have to. Amen. Come on. But I'm talking about fundamental principles of the Word of God yeah. that it, most people didn't question for a long time. Right. Amen. Right. Now they question all of it. Come on. There has never been more of a departure from the faith than there is today. Amen. This really shouldn't shock any of us, although at times I do scratch my head. I find myself at times, I'll think, well, you know what? I have heard it all until the next day, and then I realize I was wrong the day before because I hear something else. Amen? Come on. So you have never get to the place where you've heard it all, and I don't know why I continue to be shocked because the Bible says that the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times yeah. some shall depart from the faith, right. giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Yes, sir. And we have never seen that any more than we see it today. Amen. I've never found myself. You always have to defend why. Yeah. You don't accept every book that has Holy Bible on the spine of it. Come on, brother. You always have to find yourself defending why. Exactly. You stick with the King James Version. Absolutely. And people walk away from you acting like you're some kind of religious fanatic simply right. because you stick with the closest thing to the original. Right. Amen. I had someone tell me that the NIV is not the most correct version. And I said, well, that's sad and that's scary because do you realize that the polls that have been taken over the last 10 years in every one of them, the NIV has sold more copies than any other Bible? The King James is a close second, thank God. Amen. Amen. But the NIV is the best selling, at least as far as their Christian bookstore polls and trying to figure out which one sells the most. Mm. It's not the most accurate. Right. But it's the best selling. That's kind of scary. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. That people could care less how accurate it is. Yes. Come on. They would rather be able to read it easier. Yeah. To not have to put as much thought into it. Come on, brother. Amen. Come on than they would to make sure that it is accurate. Yes. That's kind of scary. Exactly. But you always have to defend the fact that you stick with the King James and you're branded a fanatic. Yes. I've, even become, I've even been called legalistic. Right. Why? Because I refuse to take the other modern day New Age versions that are watered down. Come on. That come from corruptible, from corrupted text. Right. Amen. Come on, say it. Yeah, and corrupt people. Oh. Amen. 
Simply because I choose not to. Now, I don't get up and preach that you're going to hell if you packed an NIV in this morning. I'll tell you, you don't have the closest thing to the truth. Amen? Amen. It might cost you your salvation because there's some things in there that's pretty important that's been left out. Amen? Yes, sir. True. But we're always having to defend that. Why we don't swallow everything that just because it has Holy Bible on the front of it. Mm -hmm. Always find yourself more and more defending the fundamentals of the faith. Mm -hmm. Things like the cross and Jesus' finished work. Come on. The Bible says that the preaching of the cross is foolishness to the lost, but it's the power of God yeah. for those of us that are saved. Amen. 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 The Bible says that the Apostle Paul told them that I have decided not to know anything among you except Christ and Him crucified. When Jesus hung on the cross and said, It is finished. Yes. He meant what He said and He said what He meant. Yes, sir. Amen. Exactly. Yet we find ourselves having to defend the message of the cross Absolutely. in the day that we live in because they always want to add something else to it. Right. Yeah, but it's the cross plus. It's the blood plus. No, it's the blood plus nothing. Amen? Right. As far as your salvation, Jesus said, I am the way. Yeah. I am the truth. Right. I am the life. You can't get there no other way. And that's something else you have to defend. Right. Because we have preachers out there who say, well, I believe Jesus is the way. Uh -huh. But just because you don't, don't mean that you're lost. Mm. That's not what the Bible says. Right. Amen? Amen? We have preachers that says, well, I believe that there are people who have never heard of Jesus. They don't know Jesus. But they turn to the only light that they know. And I believe that they'll be saved. That's not what the Bible says. Right. Jesus said, no man comes to the Father but by me. Amen. Amen. Right. Only through Jesus. And we find ourselves having, that's a fundamental. Well, if that's not a fundamental principle of teaching of the Word of God, I don't know what is. Amen. All the way from Genesis to the end of Revelation, it points toward one man. And that is God in the flesh, Jesus Christ. The only begotten Son of the living God. Come on, brother. All the way through there. But Come you find on, yourself brother. having to defend that. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Not to the world, but to churchy people. Right. We find yourself having to defend going to church. You know, there's a whole movement out there that don't believe in going to church no more. Right. I don't know what they do with the scripture that says, Forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. Amen. Right. But they don't believe in going to church anymore. Come on. They think that's not of God. Mm. You find yourself having to defend the inerrancy of Scripture. Right. The fact that this is the Word of God. That every bit of it, it's either all truth or ain't none of it truth. Amen? Yes. And you have some people like Bill O'Reilly and others that pick through there and say, well, this didn't really happen. Mm -hmm. That didn't really happen. Well, that don't really mean that. that see, that's something else a fundamentalist believe is that, that God's Word is true and that every bit of it from front to back is the Word of God. Amen? Not leaving any of it out. You find yourself having to defend that today. You have find yourself having to defend that Jesus is the only way. You find yourself having to defend the fact that we need to pray. Yes. Talk about fundamentals of Christianity. That's right. Jesus said, in the word, and He was quoting from the words of the prophet, that my house shall be called a house of prayer. Amen? Yes. Yet you see very little prayer going on in church anymore. Right. Oh, the pastor might take him and a few of the deacons and a few of the men folk. They might go over to the Sunday school room, join hands and say a prayer and come back out and have church. But Jesus said His house should be called a house of prayer. Right. Yet you find yourself having to teach these things all over again. Because we have a it what seems like a spiritually illiterate generation that don't know the fundamentals and the teachings of the Word of God. Absolutely. The need for prayer. Just this past week, I found myself having to defend a statement that I made about the importance of faith. I was talking about the sinner's prayer. And you all know what I'm talking about. Where the preacher says, repeat after me. Yeah. Father, I am a sinner. Mm. I, you know, and, and on down the line. You've heard preachers say it. They stand before thousands and they lead them in a prayer. And before you turn me off, listen to what else I have to say. But you will not find the sinner's prayer in the Word of God. All right. You will in this in this form and fashion. You'll never find Jesus when someone was born again. He didn't say, "Repeat these words after me." That's right. 
You'll never find one person that was born again in the Word of God that repeated the prayer of another. Now, I'm not taking away from the power of the sinner's prayer. Sometimes people don't know how to pray, and you just lead them in the prayer. But it takes more than lip service to be born again. There must be an emphasis on faith. Amen. We must believe what we are praying. Right. Many people have repeated a prayer, shook a preacher's hand, and got their name on the book, and they thought that was it. They believed they were saved until later they found out they weren't. Amen? They just simply repeated the words. And the reason I even brought that up is because I talked to a man who had been to a soul winning conference and they had given them a script on how to be a successful soul winner. And in this script, it said, with well, the instructions that came with it, said that if you spend more than three and a half minutes leading someone to the Lord, then you've spent too much time and you're wasting your time. Don't spend more than three and a half minutes talking to someone about their salvation. It gave you the prayer to lead them in, and I don't have a copy of the script today. I wish I did, but the preacher that I was talking to had one. And not one time did it emphasize the fact that you must believe. All you had to do is repeat these words after me and we'll add you to our total of people that we have saved. Mm. I'm telling you today, there is power in the sinner's prayer. Leading someone in prayer to, to be born again is not a bad thing. Right. But we must not forget the importance of faith right. that comes along with that. Because right. i got news for you. Countless souls have been saved without the sinner's prayer. But not one soul has ever been saved without faith. There must be faith in the prayer that is prayed. As a matter of fact, in things that the Bible emphasizes, there are very few things it emphasizes that is any more important than faith. As a matter of fact, the Bible says in Ephesians 2 and 8, For by grace are you saved through faith, and not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. We know that it's not of works, lest any man should boast. Amen. Come on. The Bible says in Romans 10 and 8, But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. Come on. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth, now this is where the biggest part of sinner's prayer comes from. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him. And the only thing that I was pointing out is that in leading someone to Jesus, you must emphasize the importance of faith. Yes, repeat these words after me. That's great, but believe them. Yes. Believe in your heart, the Bible says. Amen. Amen. Right. Believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead. Then it says, Thou shalt be saved. Amen. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, mm -hmm. and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Yeah. I heard someone tell a testimony one time, give a testimony on Pacific Garden Missions radio program. What's the name of that? Where they have the testimony they acted all out. I can't think of the name of it. All unshackled. And this person said that they were in a crowd of people and they were at a, I don't know if they were in church or at a crusade. But the preacher asked all of the people who didn't know the Lord to repeat after him. And this preacher might have said, you need to believe. I don't know how he laid it out there. But he led all of them in a prayer. And simply because this person didn't want to be feel like they were sticking out like a sore thumb, they repeated the words like everybody else did. But there was no faith involved in their conversion. So they weren't converted. They said they left out of the same way that they were before. I heard a Baptist preacher speaking yesterday afternoon and he said that there was a girl that came up to him and she was weeping. She needed to be saved. She was lost. He asked her, how many times have you repeated the sinner's prayer after people? She said six. Six times she had repeated words after someone else. But she had never received salvation. She had never been born again. Until she cried out in faith. The Bible says it is impossible to please God without faith. The Bible teaches us that those that come to Him must believe He is. There must be a measure of faith. 
Now, will you understand it all? Will you still have questions? Certainly you will, but you must believe that He is. It must be more than just a recitation of someone else's words. There must be faith involved in salvation. Without faith, that leads us to a whole church full of unsaved people. They've repeated a prayer. They got their name on the book. They shook somebody's hand, but they're still lost as a ball in high weeds. They haven't had any personal experience with Jesus Christ. Yeah. They're like the men in Acts. <laughs> and the devil said, Jesus, I know him, Paul. I know, but who are you? Right. Because their confession was secondhand. It wasn't a personal confession. It was not a personal relationship. And this thing is personal today. Wow. We must have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And this is birthed by faith. Right. And the Bible tells us over and over how important faith is. Hebrews 11 and 6 says, Without faith it is impossible to please Him. For he that cometh to God must believe that He is. Yeah. And that He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. Amen. But I found myself in all of the fact that I had to defend the statement that I made that said you have to have faith to come to God. They said, oh, well, you're saying the sinner's prayer is useless. No, I didn't say that. The sinner's prayer with faith works. Right. Without faith, it does not work. Amen. The Bible says you must believe in order to be saved. Right. You must put your faith in Jesus. Say, I don't have faith. Sure you do. Everybody has faith. Amen? Yeah. You have faith that you're going to get paid or you wouldn't work all week. Amen? Right. How many people would work all week thinking, well, I don't know if I'm going to get paid this week or not. <laughs> no, you expect it. Yeah. You have faith that it's going to happen. Right. Atheists have faith. Right. They have faith that there's not a God. True. Amen? Amen? just depends on what you're putting your faith in. Right. Amen? We must choose to put our faith in the right thing. Amen. People that are on disability, they have faith that they're going to get their check the first of the month. Right. When they don't, they get all upset. Amen. Why? Because they had faith that it was going to be there. Right. All of us have faith. We have faith in one another. And sometimes we let each other down. Amen. But we have faith in people. We have faith in different things. God just wants us to have faith in Him. Yes. Believe in Him. Don't have to understand it all, Brother Rodney. Don't have to be able to explain it all. My Lord, I've been saved since I was five years old. I still don't know it all. I still can't explain it all. I still can't grasp it all. I still have questions. Oh, but I believe. Amen. I believe. Come on. You must believe. Right. You must put your faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. A simple confession without faith, you will not find salvation in that in all of the Word of God. Amen. How many times did Jesus say, your faith has made you whole? Amen. All right. Your faith yeah. has made you whole. Good yeah. Amen. Yeah. Your faith. And how many times did He look at him and say that this is a faithless and perverse generation? Amen. He emphasized the importance of faith. All right. We must have faith today. Yes, sir. It must be, not, it must be more than just a prayer. It must be one of faith. It must be more than just a confession. It must be one of faith in Him. With the mouth, confession is made. With the heart, man believeth unto righteousness. Amen. You see, faith today is not an option. It's a necessity. Yes, sir. Amen. True. It is a necessity. It's impossible to be saved without faith. Exactly. It's possible for today for you to get saved without the sinner's prayer. I don't know if anybody's heard the testimony of someone along these lines or not, but uh, Ed Bruce, who uh, was country singer and had big hits, and he gives his testimony and he talks about how that he was out riding his horse and he had got off his horse, I think, and he was sitting there beside of a lake on some of the property that he owned. And up until that point, he and there wasn't nobody out there to lead him in prayer. He just said that he just simply believed. He simply took the faith that he had had in fame, fortune, whatever, and put it in Jesus. Didn't nobody have to tell him the words to say. He just prayed. He just talked to him. You don't have to be led in a certain prayer. Just put your faith in Jesus today and say, forgive me. Forgive me. I'm a sinner. All of us have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Amen. There must be faith 
Believe today. Put your faith in Jesus. Let it be more today for you than just mere words that you repeated after someone else. And you thought, well, I shook the preacher's hand. I've got my name on the book. And listen, if you take this thing of where all you have to do is repeat after me, and then you get that mixed in with, with uh, eternal security, you're in a bad shape. Because you think that because 30 years ago you repeated a prayer somewhere down, came down the front of the church and shook the preacher's hand and repeated a prayer, you think you're still okay even though you don't have faith today. All right. The Bible says whosoever believeth on Him, we must believe in Jesus today. Right. We must have faith, not just in the words, but in who that, we, that we're praying to. Come on. We must have faith today, not in the prayer, but in the one that we are praying to. And realize that faith is not an option. It is a necessity today. Yeah. We must believe that He is. We must come to Him by faith. And after you're born again, after you're saved by faith, then the Bible says the just shall live by faith. This is a faith walk. You will find that. Right. Amen. This is a faith yeah. walk. You don't always see it. You don't always feel it. It ain't always raining blessings. This is a faith walk. Amen. Your simple recitation of words ain't going to get you through the valley. Faith is going to get you through the valley. Your simple, your, your repetitiveness is not going to get you through the trial. Brother Dave, faith is going to get you through the trial. Amen. When you make it to the end, it will be because your faith has endured to the end. Faith is what's going to see you yes, through. Sir. The importance of faith. I, I, I don't have to add any of my thoughts. All I have to do to you is read the Word. And it tells us over and over how important faith is. We must believe. Do you hear me this morning? We must believe that He is. We must believe that He is our Savior. We must believe that He died on the cross. We must believe that He is alive today. And He is more than able. Yes. To save you and to see you through. Yes, sir. Faith is important yes. today. Come on. It's not something to be laid to the side and say, well, you don't really have to believe. Listen to me. I know you think this is probably silly today. I heard a testimony of a preacher who had been preaching for years. Been a pastor of a church. And he said, you know, I don't even think I really believe it myself. Mm. Lord help me. So we got unsaved preachers. Yeah. Preaching to unsaved people. Come on. And they're all dying lost. Yes, sir. The Bible says faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. So if there is a lack of faith, that leads me to believe it's because there is a lack of word all right. being preached. Come on. If there is a lack of understanding the fundamentals and the principles of the word of God, that leads me to believe that somebody ain't preaching the word of God. I turn on the television the other night, and I don't know why I do this, but from time to time I scan through the Christian networks, mm. I guess maybe hoping that I'll find something that's worth watching. Mm. What I found made me turn the TV off. <clears throat> there was one man on there, they had their entire set fixed up like a bedroom. Mm. And they were dressed in their bed clothes, with their bed robes on, <laughs> sitting up in the middle of their beds. Teaching the Word. I don't know whether it's supposed to make people feel more comfortable or what. But mm. I switched over to another channel and there was a man that if you didn't know better, you'd think he'd done escape from a mental place. <laughs> because he was one wild looking guy. And I could tell you his name and everybody would know him. Then I switched over to another one that they had to... What is that old western? High Chaparral or something like that. Mm -hmm. They had an old western on and I thought, well, that's just as well. It's, most, it's as spiritual as other stuff I was finding on them other stations. All right. Amen. Come on. I wound up turning it off. Mm -hmm. But some of the blame for this faithless generation that we are seeing is because of the wordless generation that we are seeing. The ones that are not preaching the Word of God. Amen. Come on. Because when the Word is preached, when we teach the Word, Brother Sleece, like it's supposed to be taught, Brother Dave, whenever we teach God's word from Genesis to Revelation, All right. then we will see people. We will have we will have people that believe the fundamental principles of the Word of God. We will we will have people that have faith 
Because where the word is preached, faith grows. Right. Where we talk about Abraham taking Isaac up on the mountain to sacrifice his son. And as he pulls back the knife, the angel of the Lord says, Stop, don't do it. Yeah. And he turns around and there's a ram that's caught in the, th in the thorns. We will see faith brought from that. When we talk about the Hebrew children that were cast into the fiery furnace right. and they looked down in there when they should have been crispy critters and the, the, the Bible says the king said there's four men in there now. Right. The fourth is like the Son of God. Amen. Then we will see faith come from that. All right. Your testimony uh -huh. is a kind of word that brings forth faith. Right. When you talk to people who says, I had cancer. Yeah. They said I was going to be dead in six months. Yeah. 30 years later, I'm still standing here on the promises of God. That builds faith in people. Yes, sir. The Word of God will bring forth faith. So we, one way of solving this problem is to get some preachers behind pulpits that will preach the Word of God. Oh. And then we will see faith oh. begin to grow in people's lives. Right. People that will once again believe in God enough to stand on His Word or the things that are taught between the sacred pages. Amen. Faith. My, my, my. The Bible says that when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth? We have faithless preachers preaching to faithless church members. Come on. Church is full of people who don't even know for sure whether they believe in God or not. Oh, Go to church every service. My Lord. But they don't hear enough of the Word of God to bring conviction. Uh -huh. They don't hear enough of the Word of God to bring forth enough faith for real salvation. Right. But they're added to the total. That's one of the things that these... See, they have people... This movement that I was talking about with this preacher the other day, they have people all across the United States that lead people in this three and a half minute soul winning thing. Mm -hmm. Then they call headquarters and say, Hey, I prayed with a thousand people today. Oh, great. Well, let's put them down as being born again. And then we'll tell everybody we've seen two million souls won the last four years. Mm. wonder how many people were really born again. My Lord, help them. Amen. Lord, At the very least, you ought to follow up with somebody. Come on, brother. Amen. Come on. At the very least, you should try to disciple somebody. That's right. Go to them. Ask them if they want to go to church with you. Right. Amen. Find out if it really took. True. Did they really believe or did they just say those things to get you out of their face? Come on, right. Did they really say those things just to get you off the telephone? Right. Did they really say those things because of the peer pressure that surrounded them? Everybody else was praying, so I just said the same thing they said. On, right. I don't believe it. I don't even know if there's a God, but they said it, I said it, so I guess I'm okay. Oh, help them, Lord. <laughs> My Lord. How Lindsay uh -huh. describes faith in one of his books. And I don't agree with everything Hal Lindsay teaches, but he's got some good things. No sense throwing out the baby with the bathwater. He says, we are born into eternal life through faith. Uh -huh. We are declared righteous before God by faith. Come on. We are forgiven by faith. We are healed by faith. We understand the mysteries of creation by faith. Come on. We learn God's Word by faith. By faith we understand things to come. We walk by faith and not by sight. We overcome the world by faith. We enter into God's rest by faith. Come on. And we are controlled and empowered by the Holy Spirit by faith. Mm -hmm. He said the issue of faith pervades every aspect of our relationship with God and our service for Him. Faith is the source of our strength, our provision, our courage, our guidance and our victory over the world system, the flesh, and the devil. Faith is the only thing that can sustain us in the trials and persecutions predicted for the last days. All right. Faith. The disciples came to Jesus one time, and it might not hurt us to pray this this week. They said, increase our faith. Come on. Amen. Come on. Increase our faith. What about the man whose child was tormented by the devil? He looks at the Lord and says, Lord, I believe. But help thou mine unbelief. Somebody says it's impossible to have faith and unbelief in the same temple. Well, you're crazy. Amen? We all have doubts. Now, I'm not talking about doubting your salvation or doubting God, but I'm talking about we all have fears and things that come against us from our fleshly and carnal side. Right. 
that must be overtaken by the faith side of us. Amen. Paul said, within me there's a struggle going on. Amen. There's a spiritual man and a carnal man. Yeah. Which one you feed the most? I know that's an old time teaching, but the one you feed the most becomes the strongest and overcomes the other. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. If you feed your man that lives by faith, the Word of God, the Bible, when it says faith cometh, it means it grows. It means it comes forth by. It gets stronger. It's exercised by the Word. Amen. And whenever we feed our spiritual man, uh -huh. and he becomes stronger. And we will see less and less of the carnal man that tries to get us to doubt and pulls us away from God instead of pulling us to God. Yes, sir. And the only way to do that is through faith. Amen. Get in the Word. Right. We've never lived in a day when it was more important, any more important than it is now, to hear the Word, to read the Word, to speak the Word. It's important. Why do you think the devil's been attacking the Word of God all the way back to the beginning of time? Because he knows how important the Word of God is. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. If he can take away the Word, he can take away your faith. If he can keep you from the Word, he can keep you from your faith. If he can, if he can weaken the Word, he can weaken your faith. Come on, brother. Amen. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. I, was re I was reading it. I don't even remember what the version was now. But it said that... How did it put it? For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth on Him should not perish but have everlasting life. It said might not perish. Mm. There's a big difference in that. Yes, sir. Now that's just one word that was changed but I think I like that should not than I do might not. Right. Amen. Right. Will not and might not is two different things. Amen. Right. If you're out here hanging somewhere and the guy says I will not let you fall. Amen. Amen. That gives you a little bit more assurance than saying, I might not let you fall. Amen? Amen. I will not. You will not be lost if you put your faith in Jesus. Not that you might make it in. Come on. But faith to know that you have the assurance of eternal life today. Right. It takes faith. We have to have faith. Amen? That's a fundamental principle of the Word of God that the church has to get back to teaching. Yes, the necessity of faith. Someone else this morning have something.